Hello friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe and today we are doing something super fun. I haven't seen anything like this on YouTube yet, but I could be mistaken. I didn't like search for it. But today we are doing an entire makeover in 24 hours. That's right. I'm so excited. Now, I'm actually coming to you after already doing the makeover, so I know how it goes, but no spoilers, you're gonna have to watch to find out. And today's makeover is for my hallway. So this hallway is actually a little bit more of just like a pass-through space. And because it's not very big, I thought it was the perfect space to attempt this with, so we're gonna do it together. So without further ado, let's get into it. I want to show you the color that I'm using on one of the walls in the hallway and this is going to be like the only clip besides maybe the afters we'll see that isn't shot during the 24 hour period and that's because I want to test the paint. I have a paint sample right here so I'm going to just open it and test it on the wall that way I can look at it today and early tomorrow make sure it's the right color and everything before we start the makeover. So I'm going to show you the color. So here it is, it's a bear color and it's called Limousine Leather. And I'm really excited. There it is. It is like black. It's like a shade off from black. So this is what the wall is gonna be in that hallway. And then all the pictures are gonna go in front of it. I'm so excited, let's go test it. Okay friends, I wanna take a minute to walk you through what this space is going to look like, like what the plan is. So the trim is already black. That's the decision we already made. This whole wall getting completely painted a new coat of white because I hate this color, I hate it. This wall is going to be the wall that is getting limousine leather painted on it. And that is also the wall that is going to have the new gallery wall. And the idea is as low as I can possibly start it, all the way up the wall. I want it to resemble one of those Parisian impressionist galleries where they used to have art all the way up to the ceiling. On this wall, I have a couple ideas, but I'm not sure yet if I wanna paint it white like this this wall or if I want to paint it limousine leather like this one. I also think we're going to get rid of this and I have a really cool DIY idea for a towel holder. That's the plan for this space. I'll probably paint the doors dark. This door over here got painted the same color as our fireplace and I'm debating repainting it because I think I want to paint all the doors in this hallway limousine leather. All right, first test of our color. Let's see how it looks. Hi friends, you know already that we're doing the hallway makeover and we're doing it in 24 hours. So I'm just checking in and letting you know we are about to start. It is 7.30 on the dot, which honestly couldn't have timed that better if I tried. And I just finished getting everything set up so that my life will be a little less chaotic as it gets later and later. And Ethan's here right now and he's gonna help me tape off all of the trim and walls, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's not staying up with me, sadly. I wish, but no, you have to work, so. But, so that's what we're about to do. We're about to go start taping everything off and then we are probably gonna start cutting in and I'll probably have Ethan do the high, <laughs> I'll probably have Ethan do the highest points before he goes to bed because I'm short and he's not short. So let's go. Because we try to give our cats a safe space to go to when they don't wanna deal with the dog anymore, not because we have kids.
friends, I already made my first mistake. I thought I taped over here. Ethan just informed me that I did not, in fact, <laughs> tape over here. So uh, I'm gonna finish taping off the top, right up there. I'm gonna finish taping off the top and then continue, I guess. I'll have to clean that up later, but oopsies. Oops. <laughs> okay, it has been roughly an hour. We have gotten it all trimmed out and taped off. Ethan, what time is it exactly? 8.50 exactly. 8.50 exactly. 8.50 exactly. So I'm about to start rolling and we'll see how long this takes. First coat of black paint. Go. <laughs> Friends, the first coat is done and I'm kind of obsessed. Like I, I honestly love it. Like not that I thought I wouldn't like it, but I love it more than I thought I would. And I'm kind of tempted to do this wall and this wall, but we'll see. We're gonna hold off for now, but I kind of love it. I'm obsessed. You never saw this paint color actually in the can, but this was the same color that I used in the entryway. And now we're going to use it also in the hallway. I'm trying to just build continuity through this space. This was a custom color match. I picked out a Benjamin Moore color that I ended up loving. And then obviously we went and got it with bear instead. It was just what we had closest to us, honestly. It wasn't because we prefer one or the other. Both are great, but we got a custom match. If I can find the Benjamin Moore color that I originally selected, I will pop it on the screen for you and or put it in the description. I'm gonna start cutting in on another wall. I got a few messages about the white paint in the entryway, and I want to clarify, this is not a stark white. It's actually a very light gray color. It appears really stark on camera, but I promise it's a little softer than it appears. After the first coat, Ethan actually went to bed, so I had to begin being really quiet. That's why um, from out here on out, you're going to hear me whispering a lot more. But this is just a little check-in after the first coat, and honestly, I was really liking how it was looking so far and getting really excited for the end result. just ate some more food because I realized I was getting hungry and I was like I guess I need to eat. I'm taking a little break from painting so that I can do some other things and make sure I'm ready to go in the morning. I just pulled out some of my old artwork so that I can decide what I want to frame and what I don't. I thought I was going to have to order photos, but I realized I only have one empty frame and I have some art that I think could work really well in it. So I'm actually going to pull from what I have already 
and then if I need to print more photos, I'll do that, but I actually think I might need to thrift some more frames because I have two paintings as well that I did and I'd love to hang them, but I don't have frames for them. I'm gonna add that to my to-do list tomorrow's maybe thrift two new frames. Anyways, right now I'm going to go ahead and figure out if I need to cut down any of this art and we'll go from there. moved on to the other walls. I did decide to paint the second facing wall black because I wanted to place some artwork on this wall as well. Okay, it's 3.22 and I'm tired. <laughs> That's okay. I'm pushing through. I think I'm gonna get my second win soon, but I just finished putting the second coat of white paint on my last white wall. I can tell the black wall needs a couple more minutes because the paint is still looking like a little wet in places. So while that's happening, I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna clean up the white paint and then I will finish the black paint. Good morning friends so I made it until about 6 a.m. last night or this morning and caved <laughs> I went to bed and that's okay because it's still the same day it's now exactly noon Wow the timing in this video the timings are working out it's exactly noon so I have a little bit more to do I have to touch up the paint uh, there are a couple areas that just didn't peel away cleanly, so I'll touch up that. Then it's time to hang the gallery wall. Now, Ethan took the car, so my plan to go get frames is going to have to wait until he's back. But he's done around four, so I should have enough time to go pick up new frames and get back, hang them, all before our 24-hour mark is up, because we started at 7.30 p.m. So... We're almost done, and I sacrificed a couple hours for sleep because I felt like I could still get it done. I'm gonna get dressed and ready, and then I will touch base with you, let you know what time it is, and we're gonna get started because we've got a lot to accomplish before this 24 hours is over. Let's go. Okay, friends, this is how it's looking. I'm obsessed with it. I love the black wall. I think it's gonna be perfect and it's gonna do exactly what I want it to do, which is help all of the artwork that we're putting on this wall pop. So that 
brings me to the next part. I do have some painting touch-ups to do, but honestly, I'd rather do that closer to the end. I would rather get the gallery wall planned and hung as soon as possible. So that said, that's what we're gonna be doing next. I'm gonna show you how I'm going about planning the gallery wall, what steps I use, and I'm gonna take you on a little tour of all the artwork that's going up here. So we're gonna go do that and get this gallery wall accomplished. The first things that I normally do when I'm planning a gallery wall is I get together all of my pieces and I lay them out wherever I'm going to be putting the gallery wall. So in this case, I'm gonna be laying out all of my pieces on the floor right here. This just helps me get an idea of what I want the orientation to be, where approximately I want it to be on the wall, because I find that when you're planning it somewhere else, it's a little bit harder to visualize where exactly the spacing is gonna be. So this is what I recommend if you are not doing the tried and true, like take craft paper and cut it out to size. I find that pretty wasteful, but sometimes it's really helpful for visualization. So if you struggle with visualization, I would definitely recommend cutting uh, craft paper templates of each of your pieces and literally moving them along the wall. But for me, this is the method that I prefer and it's way less work than that. sure there aren't too many things that are too similar next to each other. So for example, I have three pictures, this one, this one, and this one down here that are of Ethan and I. I don't want those right next to each other. So I'm taking the opportunity to make sure that they are put in different spaces. The other thing I need to decide is if I want the cool toned artwork. So these um, on one side of the gallery and the warm toned on another side of the gallery. And the whole point of this gallery wall for me is a display of all of the pieces that I love, all of the art that people give us, true amalgamation of things. So I'm not concerned necessarily about this all matching a certain aesthetic. That's not the point of this. I'm going to go through and just kind of play around with the shapes and see what I like and what feels right to me. There is no scientific way or exact way to design a gallery wall. It's really about what looks good to you and what feels right. So take some time to play around with it. Think of, do I like these colors next to each other? Do I like these images next to each other? Do they play off each other well? and go from there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I think I found a configuration I'm pretty happy with. So here is what it's looking like so far. Now, when I was playing around with this, you saw me moving a lot of stuff around over here probably. And that's because I realized I had all of my hand painted pieces. These are not all done by me, by the way. But all the hand painted pieces were all in one spot. And so I moved some around over here. And so it, that's what I'm talking about. Try and pay attention to what kinds of pieces you have next to each other and move them from there. Like, I don't mind that these are two photographs right next to each other, but if I did, I would probably switch them with something else. The other thing that I did is you'll see that there are not too many black or brown frames all bunched together. So I have three black frames here, so I put a brown frame in between it. And when I go thrifting later, I'll probably try and pick up a brown frame for this, a wood frame. That way it's not too um, black frame heavy. If I wanted the space to look more uniform and aesthetic, I would go for all one type of frame, all with matting. But because, like I said, that is not the purpose of this, my goal is to intersperse it intentionally 
so that it looks a little collected. So that's how all of this came to be the way that it is. Also, these pieces right here, I'm planning on putting around up here, around the top of the door frame. So when I get to that point, I'm going to have to probably rearrange these a little bit, but that's, that's kind of the goal for this. Okay, friends, next thing you want to do, this is a step that I feel like a lot of people miss or don't talk about when they hang a gallery wall. You want to find eye level. Eye level is usually around 60 inches high on your wall. Keep in mind, this is not the height you will be hanging your picture. This is typically where you want the middle of your picture to land. So if I have a really large frame, I want the middle of that frame to be at 60 inches, not the top of it. Otherwise, it'll be hung too low. So now that I found 60 inches, I'm going to go down the wall and just make like a couple reference marks of where 60 inches is along this whole section. That way I don't lose sight of where that is as I'm hanging this wall. Because some pieces will be a lot higher than this and some pieces will be a lot lower. But I want to make sure that I have one or two riding this 60 inch line so that it feels like it's actually curated for the eye. Another pro tip if you have dark walls like I do and it's hard to see pencil marks, mark off your reference point with blue tape. Just make sure you line up either the top or the bottom with your mark. Don't put it in the center because then it's not very specific. photo I just marked how high on the wall I wanted this picture to rest next I'm using painters tape to mark off where the hanging hardware is so I know where to place my nails After I get the hardware marked, I place the tape on the wall and I hammer my nails over the marks to avoid excess measuring. Here I'm measuring out how far away I want my next piece. Typically gallery wall pieces are hung three to five inches apart, so if you want it to look very professional, I would stick to those measurements. going out and Ethan and I went on an impromptu date and I wouldn't have traded it for the world. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to pick up where I left off today. Last you guys saw we touched base around four o'clock. I had just finished the gallery wall, all of what I had access to, but I needed to go pick up some frames. 
So Ethan and I, when we went out, we picked up some frames for the art pieces that we have for the wall. Now it's time to do a couple final touches and finish off the space. To finish the space, I hung the last two pieces of artwork that I had thrifted frames for the day before. I brought in a DIY stone pedestal and I styled it with towels that I already owned. Lastly, I touched up the paint on our bathroom door. As well as the finish on a few of my thrifted black frames. After that, the space was complete and it was time for reveal. Another space in my home is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you would ever paint your walls black. I know that's a bold design choice. Otherwise, uh, give me some ideas on what you'd like to see me try to do in 24 hours next. I would love to do this again. If you want more behind the scenes and my day to day, all of my socials are linked down below. So my Instagram, TikTok, Facebook page, and Pinterest if you need some design ideas. Last of all, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. It truly means the world to me. And you can also hit the bell icon to be notified every time I upload a new video. All right, that is all, and I will see you next time.